Hello everyone, this is Michael from Blue Sky Bio. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to turn a tooth into a screw retained crown. I had just finished creating a tutorial on how to use the surgical guide, the surgical guide wizard for one or two implant case to very quickly create a surgical guide. We imported the DICOMs, we merged STL file with the DICOMs automatically, and we placed the tooth together with the implant and abutment and we created the surgical guide and that's what we're looking looking at on screen now so turning the tooth into a screw retained crown is actually a very quick and simple process i'm going to hide my surgical guide it's not relevant um, at the end of the wizard i had an option of starting a new wizard case or closing the wizard so i opted to close the wizard and this is the screen that we're looking at right now so now i'm going to switch from normal mode into our crown and bridge module we have the positioning, we have everything as was planned uh, previously. I'm gonna switch here to our restoration design panel. Crown on tie base is the proper uh, selection. I'm gonna choose mandible, and we're just gonna confirm the options here. STL model lower is correct. Our crown is correct, a tie base is correct. If we had an opposing arch, we can import it by going to file, import uh, STL. And then we could actually very easily align it to align the opposing arch to the model that we have here by aligning, by using the align to model function, which we're not gonna go into now, but you should know that it exists and could be done very, very quickly. So now once I've confirmed this, the options, I'm gonna go ahead and click on start. Since I've been playing around with this case previously, it uh, gives me these new options. I'm gonna choose plan your restoration. Our first step, it's five, we're gonna go through a five step process. We could see it's step one or one of five. The first one is to confirm the undercuts. So we have the arrow here. If we wanna modify uh, the path of insertion, we could just rotate uh, the arrow. Alternatively, we could orient the model on screen and then choose set insertion direction from view. Once we've verified our insertion direction, we go ahead and click on next we're being prompted to define their proximal areas. This is because the software will slightly modify and update uh, the crown size to make it uh, very delicately have the crown kind of kissing the adjacent uh, teeth. So we're helping out the software by defining their proximal areas. If we have the crown in the perfect uh, place and positioning, because we spent more time when we were doing the surgical guide wizard, and we don't want the software to do any adjustments to the sides of the crown, then we could click do not modify crown shape or placement. Otherwise, we mark their proximal areas and we go ahead and click on next. Here we have our margin curve. If I wanna see the tooth, then we're gonna activate the visibility of our tooth. The, the surface with the D is what we're designing now. So it's kind of working process in Kind of work in progress excuse me so we're not going to activate that but i could have this on screen and i could hold down my shift key and just grab and drag with my left mouse button to modify the curve however i want to place it okay for our purposes let's say that this, this is sufficient i'm going to switch back to our uh, restoration design panel and go ahead on and click on next so now we're up to step four of five And what this step is gonna do is it allows us to modify the connectivity between the crown we're designing and the titanium uh, base. So we could grab and drag any of these nodes if we wanna modify the contour or the shape over there. We could also define uh, the crown margin using the slider. We could see in 3D how that's affected. We could do the same to the titanium base margin. We could modify or change the minimal thickness of the crown that we're creating if we want a different thickness. And we have the crown cement spacer, which is the space between the crown that we're designing and the titanium base. Um, so we could change that if we need. And crown create crown screw channel is activated by default. And we have the visual representation of that screw channel based on the correct uh, size for the screw for the tie base that was chosen. Going to go ahead and click on next. The last step allows us to modify the shape of the crown any way we want to. So here we have our pretty much finished uh, crown. We could choose if we want to um, add or remove material. We could do that from any angle. We could also do it through the opposing arch if we have it imported. 
Here we're just going to add material by shift and left mouse button to grab and drag and we could add some material there. We could remove material instead of shift it's with the control button and the left mouse and we could go ahead and make any modifications that we want. We could also uh, do a local deform. We could grab here we could reduce the tool size if we want, but if we want to increase the cusps or, re or reduce the cusps, simply shift and move your mouse backwards and forwards to do any adjustments there. And we could really modify the crown design any way that we want using these tools. We could go ahead and smooth things out a bit. And once we are done, we have this checkbox here to cut approximal intersections if we want to have any of these intersections uh, removed automatically by the software. I'm just going to turn that off and click on next. And here we have our designed crown. So if I go out to teeth surfaces, I could turn off the implant and abutment. We could see the internal design. The D version is what we just designed and the non D version is our initial uh, virtual tooth that we started off with. So exporting from the crown and bridge module is completely free. We could export the STL file as well as the XML file for milling. When we go to the export option, it's going to have checked automatically whatever we have visible on screen. So if we just want to prep a little bit, we could turn off everything and just have our crown. Now when we go to file export data, we have all of our different options about what we want to export. And the only thing that's checked, because the only thing that was visible on screen, is our designed crown. We have uh, the export box checked to export the STL file. We have the CAM box checked to export the XML file. Uh, we could also, if we like, activate Open and Rayware. So if we have a Sprint Ray printer, we could have the, the STL file sent directly to the Rayware software and go ahead and click on Export. The software, now asks, the software now asks us where we want to save everything. So let's create a new folder on our desktop. We'll call this crown export and click OK. And what's happening, so our Rayware software is opening automatically. Our crown is on the print bed and we could go ahead and modify the positioning or do whatever we like here. And if we switch over to our desktop, to our crown export uh, folder, we could see that we have the STL file and we also have the construction XML file if we want to mill it out. So this is a very quick and easy way. We saw in a couple minutes, even with my explanations, it just took a few minutes to turn that uh, virtual tooth that we placed during the surgical guide planning into a crown that could be used for an immediate load case. Um, additional free educational material is available on blueskyplan.com. And of course, labpronto.com, if you, if you want any help with planning and or manufacturing any digital products, visit labpronto.com. Let me know your thoughts, questions, comments, feedbacks about this video. You can put it into the comments below, or you could always email us with any questions at plan at blueskybio.com.